Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I, that's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States Counter Spies especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, more in the case of the cold-blooded professor. Another counter-spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola hits a spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12-ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi is America's big, big favorite. And America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. It is doubtful if as many warning flashes ever went out about any criminal as were flashed by the United States Counter Spies concerning one Professor Emery Horn. Professor Emery Horn is a mastermind of crime. He is a constant danger to all peaceful citizens. Professor Horn murdered a counter-spy agent with a special flat-handled gun strapped to his chest. He poisoned his housekeeper with poison candy. Finally captured by the counter-spies, Horn arrogantly described these methods of murder in detail. Tried and sentenced to death. Professor Horn was held in the safest penitentiary in the country, pending his execution. A few months ago, Professor Horn consulted the prison doctor about his badly infected upper lip. Uh, You're quite a character, Horn. While addressing me, doctor, kindly use my title. Oh, of course. Professor Horn. Only who made you a professor? The only person in the world who's qualified. Myself. Mm Mm-hmm. Four armed guards, and still we're in the prison walls. Within the prison walls, Doctor. All right. Hold still now. I don't understand why your upper lip isn't healing. This is a bad infection. I believe the lack of healing is due to hyperproteinemia. Prison food is lacking thiamine hydrochloride and niacinamide. No. Really think you know medicine, don't you? Pardon me if I speak medically over your head, doctor. But then ignorance always irritates me. Ah! There's hair around that infection. All right. I'll have to cover your whole upper lip with adhesive again. How long were you a horse, doctor? (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I hurt you. Really? I hear you made six attempts to escape in two months, Horn. Uh, Professor Horn. How news does travel. That's only ten days more till you're transferred to the death house. You have a morbid mind, haven't you? No, no. I was only going to tell you that, uh, ironic as it may be, those ulcers you had for so long are cured. Through no doing of yours, Doctor, I'm sure. Okay. Get going, uh, Professor. Out that way. Bugs. Bugs. Uh, are you awake? Well, at least prison mattresses ain't hide it down, you know. Well put, Bugs. This cell is getting on my nerves, too. You hungry, Bugs? You said it. Here's a sugar cookie I took from the mess. 
Uh, you could steal the nose off the warden right while he was looking. <laughs> Here, ain't it? Thanks. And uh, put the crumbs in your pocket. Why, why should I go putting cookie crumbs in my pocket? You figure that one out, and I wouldn't have had to plan your escape for you. Who's escaping? Both of us. You one way, I another. How? You've noticed I've been bringing back little pieces of lemon from the main dining hall. That's when I knew you was nuts. In my mattress, I have an extra pair of prison pants. Lemons contain acetic acid, and acetic acid bleaches. Uh. I've been bleaching those pants with lemon juice, and now they're as white as any duck pants. Uh, sometimes I think you're a witch. Hey, where'd you pinch them glasses? They're horn-rimmed spectacles, Bugs. You ever see a little piece of wire lying around in the recreation yard? Uh, sure. Well, there are lots of little pieces like those, and I've been collecting them, winding them together, and bending them into these eye frames and ear pieces. The next step was to unravel threads in the bottom of these trousers and wrap them around the strands of wire to thicken them. Yeah, it's it just right. And then I had to give the strands a smooth surface. A paste of flour and water did that. Yeah, but uh, where did you get the, uh, the glass in them? Plastic crystals stolen from the wristwatches of other prisoners. And with my new mustache... Hey, now, wait a minute. You ain't got no mustache. What do you think is under this adhesive tape on my upper lip? Well, you, you said you, you scratched your lip. I did. On purpose. With a dirty pin to make sure the infection continued. My excuse to keep the adhesive on. And all the time you were growing a mustache under it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so... Now you got white pants, a pair of specs, a mustache. But why go to all that trouble just to bust out over the wall? Bugs, ever notice in the corner of our recreation room there's a pile of old building plans, blueprints of model houses, things like that? Yeah. At the right moment, I'll suddenly become a building contractor inspecting the building. And I'll walk right out to freedom and the execution of a plan I have in mind. Holy smoke, Professor. You sure? You sure? Having trouble, Bugs? There's pain in my insides. I, I, I feel like I'm, di like I'm dying. I, Bugs, you are dying. That cookie was poison. Help, help me. I, I don't want to die. I can't anymore. That poison I made scraps of garbage, bits of toothbrush handle and soap is too strong and quick, Bugs. Help, help find out that you've done this. Oh, no, no. The crumbs I made you put in your pocket, they'll prove you stole the cookie yourself. All right. You dirty rotten. God! God! What's eating you, Professor? Hey, what's with bugs? I'm afraid it's my fault, God. You killed him, Professor? He confessed to me about a murder he'd committed the police never knew about. He was eating a cookie. He must have poisoned it. He must have committed suicide right under my eyes. I'm ducking out into that little ante room off the recreation hall. Cover my place in line so they won't miss me. I need at least three and a half minutes. Now, the bleach trousers. Glasses. Adhesive tape off. And into the hall. 50 
odds to beat him. Three minutes left before I miss. Uh, guard. Hey, who are you? I'm the architect's assistant working on alterations to be made in this prison. Yeah? I didn't hear nothing about no alterations. How did you get into the prison? Now by the entrance on the other side with the rest of our staff. Has uh, this uh, desk you're seated at always been located at this spot? Uh, yeah. Twelve years now. So as I can watch this inside gate. An automatic slide gate controlled from here? No. When the gate's to be opened, I phone the main ga gate room and they push a button. I will and uh, this uh, gate slides open. Will you uh, demonstrate, please? My dear man, I'm in a hurry. I've got to know how these things work. All right, all right. Erickson, gate number two. Open her up. Mm, some architect guy. Yeah. Okay. Now she'll open. Well, there's your gate. Fine. Thank you. Hey, you want to see your clothes again? Uh, yes, please. can't just walk out of here. I'm connected with the building contractor. You got to sign out with me. Then I got to check it at the main gate room. They check it with your signature when you sign yes, in. Yes, all right. But uh, first, you've got to show me how this gate works. We're planning alterations. We may have to move this platform that you sit on. Oh. Well, uh, the gate there is controlled by this button here. But the uh, inner gate's controlled from the main gate room. Why is this one easier? Well, they figure anybody who gets past that gate has a right to leave. Oh, we may have to change that. I, I want a closer look at the gate itself. Uh, push the button now, please. Thank you. Hey! You coming back? Uh, no, my work here's all done. You can close the gate. Okay. Helen, Harry Peters. Mr. Harding's not in his office here. I'll try all the departments. Attention, all counters by department. Is Mr. Harding on the main floor? Rush report for you, Mr. Harding. Rush report. <laughs> Attention all counter spy departments. This is David Harding. I've just learned that Professor Emery Horn has made an amazing escape from Alderlanda Penitentiary. All trace of him has been lost. All information having even a faint bearing on the professor. Rush to me, top priority. Dave, I was sure we had the professor salted away for good. Ah, he's fantastically clever, Peter. Now he's loose again, a vicious killer. Well, I smell trouble during his trial, Peter. The amazing knowledge of legal tricks he passed on to his defense lawyer almost saved him from the chair. But we're going to get him again if it's the last case I ever handle. I don't think I've ever seen you so angry, Dave. He's killed two state troopers, a woman accomplice, a counter-spy agent, probably a fellow convict. I'm never going to give up on that man. We haven't got one lead on him. Then we'll have to start back at the beginning. Now, we know that for some years, Horn posed as a scientist and lived quietly in a small town in Illinois. Where he killed the counter-spy, but Dave, we find Tooth combed that place at the time. This time, we won't be looking for a clue in the ordinary sense, Peters, but some new clue to his character. We'll have to learn about the man from that old house. Back to Counter Spy in just a moment. But first, Pepsi Cola hits a spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question why take less when Pepsi's best? 
No budget, no allowance ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola. Because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks. That's twice as much tangy taste, twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi is best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi is best? Pepsi-Cola hits a spot, tastes terrific when you're hot, more and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store and say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now back to Counter Spy, an eerie stormy night at the former hideout of Professor Horn in Illinois. Dave, this old house is the best locale for a murder I've seen in years. It was the locale of a murder, Peter. The stain of Agent Cameron's blood. Still there on the carpet. I know. That thunder. This musty, creaky old place. I'd hate to spend a night here alone. I'll control your imagination, Peters. Let's stick to facts. Gladly. Have we got any? Well, I've been here in the study looking through some of these scientific books Horn left behind. Check with me and see if I make sense. Now, look. A book on physics. Stresses and strains. Uh... Take this page. Hmm. Little drawings. Sort of doodles in the margins. Scribbled probably while he was thinking over, digesting what he was reading. Sketchy little drawings, aren't they? Unfinished. Almost absent-minded. There are some on almost every page. See? Hmm. I'll take another book at random. Yeah, this one on biochemistry. Nothing eighth grade about these books, is there? You see this page? More drawings of the same kind. It's true of a dozen more of these volumes I've leafed through. And Horn's a doodler. A scientific doodler. Well, Dave, how can we use the fact that it's a characteristic of Horn's to doodle in scientific books? Well, Horn has this scholarly side to him. Now, wouldn't you think that everywhere he goes, he'd want to consult scientific works? But where could he, except in libraries? Exactly. To be more exact, scientific libraries. Right. Now, first, we'll check through all these books. We may find various definite types of doodles that occur over and over. We'll make photostatic copies and send a set to every library in the country. But, Dave... This will mean asking librarians to watch all their readers. They're not trained for that. Well, way. all library books are inspected every so often, Peters. The only tiny clue we need may be hidden this very moment in some library. If we only knew where. And if we only knew where Horn is now. Okay, fella, come on. Thank you, stranger. These desert flats are mighty lonely. Not many cars coming through. I'm glad you came along. Especially since I see you're, uh, just about my size. What? Get out of the car. Oh, I'm stick up, huh? Okay, okay. I guessed very well about your size, mister. Your suit will, um, suit me very well. My suit? I'd rather you took my money. I can always get money when I want it, mister, uh, what's your name? Blake. Jack Special Delivery Blake. The professional football player? What a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Blake. Take off your suit, please. Hey, well, the next bullet won't go into the ground, Mr. Blake. It'll go into you. Okay, tough guy. 
There you are. Jacket, throw it into the car, please. Now the trousers. I'll need the shoes too, please, Mr. Blake. And, of course, your car. Hey, look, I'll die out in this desert in the sun. True. We must be 20 miles from water. Oh, be a sport, will you? Give me some kind of a chance. A chance? Very well, Mr. Blake. We'll play a little game of my invention. Just remain there beside the road, Mr. Blake. Now, uh, Mr. Blake, you start running. And I'm going to try to run you down with your own car. If I don't get you in one minute or less, you'll be perfectly free. I can't outrun an automobile. Oh, you forget your special delivery, Blake, the best broken field runner in football. Start running, Mr. Blake. Any direction, I'll even give you a little head start. Good, good. Now, here I come. Ah, ha, ha. A nice turn, Mr. Blake. Just missed you. Keep on running. Blake, only ten seconds more and you'd still be alive. But then I wouldn't have had your clothes and your car, would I? San Francisco Scientific Library, but the drawings don't seem the same. It may not be our man. I think it is. The characteristics are here. The little drawings are more definite and finished. As if he had a definite plan. There's a volume on explosives. Here. Uh, page 287. Dealing with liquid explosives. The drawings look something like bottles. And a notation, 32 ounces. It means 32 ounce bottles, maybe, but why bottles? Well, bottles are an innocent way of carrying liquid explosives, aren't they? Into a bank vault, perhaps. But there are no books here about vaults or electronic protection devices. Funny, well, here's a book on the scientific preservation of works of art. Paintings. No, I hadn't got to that one yet. Here's something, Dave. Huh? Drawings on two different pages. Pages where the locations of famous paintings are listed. It's an unusual interest for Horn. By George. What? Little drawings that might represent explosions. And look where they are. Right next to the listing of four different paintings kept here in San Francisco. I suppose Horn were planning to steal them, preserve them in good condition scientifically, and sell them later in secret. It says here these paintings are insured for $250,000 each. Any one of them would be a good haul. Unless some of these paintings are kept in vaults. They might be. Then that's where his liquid explosives had come in. No doubt there are watchmen to be taken care of. The explosives might serve two purposes, Dave. Kill the watchmen and blow open the vaults, yes. But why pick quart bottles to carry the stuff in? Anyway, we'll check these museums about their storage vaults. See if we can't narrow the field. <laughs> Okay, and as to the watchman, Peters, that's your special assignment.
Oh. Oh. What's that, sir? You the uh, night watchman here at the art center? That I am, sir. I didn't see you sitting there in the shadows. Yeah, me feet are after needing a bit of a rest from walking me post. A lonely job, hmm? That it is. The museum being off by itself this way. And creepy, too, with the cemetery yonder beside the church. <laughs> I uh, happen to have a couple of bottles of wine here in this package. Could, uh, could I offer you a drink? You could. Only it uh, might not be wise for you to be uh, tipping a bottle here outdoors. Yeah, there's never nobody to see. Well, I'm sure it'd be better inside. Maybe, uh, maybe down in the cellar where it'd be warm. We'll drink a friendly toast to art. Uh, but if you're bound to give me a drink, I don't mind the first one right here. Very well. Try this Porto from Spain. It's a dark, heavy wine. There you are. Thank you. <sighs> and mighty fine it is, too. <laughs> Shall we uh, go inside now? Uh, what kind of wine would that other bottle be now? <laughs> I'll show you inside. Let me see. Oh, very well. It's a uh, light white wine. There, now, that's more like it. Might I read the label? Oh, I must say, you can take my word. I'd like to know what it is I'll be drinking. I only want to look at the label. If you insist. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Tip Top Valley Sauton. Bottled by Tip Top Valley Winery Incorporated. Now, I wonder if this bottle would bounce. You thrown it! You wanted me to drink some wine that blows up, hmm? You fool, you! <laughs> you fool! Let go of my arm! <laughs> Take it easy, Horn. We've got... No, no, no! It's okay now, Dave. All right, Horn. You're not blowing open any vaults tonight with explosive wine. Hot ink. I'd like to know how you caught on. I'll be glad to tell you. And I'll also tell you that we know where you got that suit you have on. You murdered Jack Blake in the desert two weeks ago. I'll be glad to tell you a lot of things, Horn, including this. You're not going to cheat the executioner again. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola hits the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot. Lot more value, lot more debt. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station, to Counter Spy. Listen next Tuesday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the arrogant arsonist. When an international combine was threatened with exposure, the secret owner hired an operator to erase certain files with kerosene globules. How this incident forced certain Counter Spy agents to act as cupids in reverse will be exposed on our next broadcast. Be sure to tune in next Tuesday for Case of the Arrogant Arsonist on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by William M. Sweets, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight.